this particular someone and the US company together co develop some IPs and therefore they will co own the IPs. The US rights will be with the US company, the non US rights will sit with the sub one, for example. So they are co developing some intellectual property, and some of the largest companies have done this. But anyway, so the non US rights belong to this sub one. They will cost share all the R&D expenses or all the cost for development of that particular intellectual property. This sub one effectively therefore becomes part owner of the intellectual property. US Co is a part owner. US Co owns it so far as US rights are concerned. Sub one owns it so far as the non-US rights are concerned. So far as the non-US rights are concerned, sub one in turn licenses this to sub two the use of the intellectual property, which are owned by sub one, co-developed and co-owned by sub one along with US Co. And effectively what happens is, sub one will license this for a large license fee to sub two. Sub two in turn earns license fees from across the world. Now when sub two earns the license fees, what happens is two things. The royalty paid by sub two to sub one is tax deductible here. So sub one earns royalties from various countries, but pays a large amount of this. So 90-95% of what it earns, it pays back to sub one. So what is left with sub two is a small margin or a thin margin. Sub license fees received, license fees paid. Sub license fees received is 100, license fees paid is 95, what remains is only five. And on that five, sub two pays a 12 and a half percent tax, which is again very low. So far as sub one is concerned, Ireland says that sub one is not taxable here in our country because it is a non-resident. We don't regard sub one as a resident. It might be incorporated here, but it is controlled and managed elsewhere in some tax area. So for all practical purposes, it allows the tax deduction for the license fees paid, but does not apply any withholding tax on the license fees paid by sub two to sub one, and also does not tax the sub one at all. Forget withholding, even otherwise, someone does not have to file tax returns or pay taxes there because it is regarded as a non resident under domestic law. Thanks to all of what is happening, Ireland recently has already said it came up for a lot of flack, as you are aware. It has already said that we will plug this loophole, we will not regard ourselves as a blacklisted entity or whatever, and we will ensure that we treat someone as resident. For all practical purposes, we will even override treaties if they are coming in the way. But we will ensure that such structures which permit, particularly US companies used it quite a lot, to avoid taxes globally or to achieve double non-taxation, do not survive for too long. Thank you so much. Uh, happy to take any questions and sorry for the delay. Supervise, to control, to ensure that there is no malfunctioning, 
there is no error, no bug, no mistake in the programming, is not mine. I am certainly not in control of that particular equipment, software, whether it is hardware or software. I am not responsible for the correctness of that process. I am interested in and what I am entitled to is the final outcome ought to be correct. Then I don't feel there is no question of control with me. It is the FO which is under an obligation to ensure that I get right calculations and so on and so forth. And therefore, so far as I am concerned, so far as ICO is concerned, it is only entitled to the final end product. It is availing of a service. It is availing of a standard facility. Yes, there is processing being done, equipment being used, program software being employed, deployed, whatever you call it. But those are being deployed, employed, used by FCO for the purpose of providing the service to us. Regarding integration of FTS, human intervention, <coughs> what level of human intervention is required? Because some level, see whether putting on the, sitting on the equipment, uh, keep making anticipation. In the case of Metro, the Andhra branch of the tribunal has uh, founded a discordant board, not on by the Bombay High Court in Siemens case. So the issue comes to what level of human intervention is required. Whether it is point one percent intervention, the involvement of human being related to the Well, obviously each case will depend on its own facts, but I would not feel that merely because there is some human interface that would result in FTS possibility. Yes. The human intervention has to be of a certain beyond a certain beyond a certain threshold, which you would call as fees are for technical services, which those human interventions are resulting in. I think if you regard even switching on or something as you know human intervention, that is not what fees for technical services clause was for for at all. We are talking of real technical service being offered through that human intervention not just some routine functioning. So I think we are talking of, so long as the core services are not being offered, I think you should.
future upliftment in value from today onwards. That I think will get extremely difficult going forward for the simple reason that it just does not have enough substance to be able to say that it is meeting all the risks. In order to bear all the risks, to decide whether I should further spend X amount of money or Y amount of uh, you know dollars to further develop this IT, does it have the wherewithal, at least the decision maker on its roles, payroll, to be able to decide that yes, I will spend or not spend this extra amount of money, what decision I should take at a given threshold, if all of that is not contained there, then I think that further value creation will be very difficult to attribute to that particular IT board. So I would feel just paying the money and buying the IT under development stage and then saying all future value equation will belong to that COCA IT gold co which has no substance will be very difficult. Value equation will more and more increasingly sit where the substance is. Friends, I think we had a very excellent session and uh, may I request uh, Dennis to propose the board. Thanks. Good evening. The foremost question in all our minds, I think you get the slides. The speaker has said, as concerned, it will be uh, circulated by each and each one. It's been my, my privilege to propose this vote of thanks to Mr. Masaita. He has taken us through, I think, six case studies because I've been busy noting down uh, the points. I might have lost count of the number of case studies. But he has explained each case study in a very short span of time, very clearly and concisely. Uh, it's, we have been fortunate since we are all here to hear from my Actually, uh, for uh, this today's conference, this has been an icing on the cake, if I can uh, if I may say so. I request you all to carry this vote of thanks to the real of us. Before we break, uh, we need to, uh, one or two things, one or two announcements. What is the feedback form has been given? Please, uh, I give it outside while you go in. We also need to, sorry, we also need to, Thank a few people for this conference. I'll just take uh, a minute. One member of the International Taxation Committee, headed by uh, Naresh Bhai, who are going to have on this uh, conference. The managing, the managing Committee, the office banners, who have uh, lent their full support in uh, for this conference. Of course, the faculty, who have given their time and their knowledge. The hotel staff, the chambers staff will also work tirelessly for this. <laughs> Two people to whom I would like to single out is Lex Shreyas and uh, Karthik Binaf Sinshya, who have been the course, uh, who have been the conference coordinator, they have also worked very hard. And finally, of course, you all for having come. Thank you. Sorry, uh, okay, one other announcement. We have a June uh, International Tax Conference to be held in Goa. Uh, and this is between 18th June to 21st June. So please watch out for the announcement and uh, please enroll. Thank you.